All right guys, so today we're gonna learn how to replace your phone screen with a new image or video. And there's two kind of scenarios to this. Your phone could either be stationary, where let's say you're filming on a tripod, or your phone could be moving around. So someone could be moving with the phone, or you could be getting further away or closer to the phone. And with that, this application can be used in many different scenarios. Um, not only a phone screen, but you could use it on a TV screen, a computer screen, a picture frame, anything you can think of that you wanna replace with a new video or picture, this is the tutorial for you. So uh, with that said, let's jump into After Effects and let's get the tutorial started. All right, so we have just opened After Effects and you have your video clip here with your phone. And my video clip, as you can see, I get closer to my phone here. And we're going to want to replace this black screen here with a picture. And so uh, this is a picture I took while I was in Bali of a cute little monkey. And we're going to replace that screen with this picture here. So if your video does not move, so let's say you're shooting this on a tripod. The easiest thing to do is to come up into effects of presets and look for corner pin. And you're just going to come drop that on your image here. And we'll make that visible. And it's as easy as taking the four corners of your image and putting it on the four corners of your screen. And so not only does it scale it for you, but it actually changes the perspective of the image to match the corner pins. And so if you notice, I'm not going to spend too much time on actually getting it perfect, but the perspective of the picture looks like it is actually on the phone screen. So this is for if your video does not move, so you're shooting on a tripod. Because as you can tell, when I start moving it, since we haven't tracked the picture, it's gonna move all around. All right, so now what to do if you want that picture to stay on that screen while your video moves. So let's first go back to the picture here and let's delete corner pin. And we're just gonna hide the image really quick. And we're gonna select our video clip and we're gonna come up to animation and we're gonna actually track this in Mocha AE today. I wanna try to uh, get some of you guys to step out of your boundaries here and try something new. And so uh, we're gonna go track in Mocha AE. All right, so when you open Mocha, it might ask you to fill out some like user information, but other than that, this should pop up and it's going to ask you to name your project. It's gonna ask you for the location of your project and then it's gonna ask you what clip you're importing here. And this should already be filled out because we had our clip selected. And if for some reason it isn't automatically filled out, you can go into choose and find your clip. But I've noticed, and this occurred and happened to me, is that I kept getting an error from Mocha that it couldn't import my clip. And I don't remember exactly what the error was, but for some odd reason, and I really don't know why, the fix was to go online and download QuickTime to my computer and that fixed it and uh, I could not tell you guys why but I believe it was 7.79 version of QuickTime and that fixed all my issues so if you're getting that error just go download that really quick and come back to the tutorial but after you have that the next important thing is to make sure that your frame rate here is the frame rate of your video and of your composition and this is important because when you track this data, if you track it at a different frame rate or your composition is at a different frame rate, the track is gonna be off. So this is very important that this is correct. We're gonna hit okay and I'll overwrite that. And so this is the interface for Mocha here. And uh, we're not gonna go over a lot of these tools because that'll be way too uh, overwhelming for most of everyone. But what you need to know is that we're going to come up here and use the X spline tool for our case. So it says create X spline. So we're going to click that. And then after we click that, we're going to come and we're going to just make a shape around our screen that we want to track. And so Mocha, it's going to take all that information within the shape we create. And that's what it's going to analyze for the track. So for instance, you're going to left click. And then you're going to left click, left click, and left click. And when you're done, you can right click to get rid of it. And so now what it's doing is it created a shape around whatever we're trying to track. And it's going to take all the data within this shape and use it to track whatever is in here. So we can kind of see that it automatically rounds the edges. So just come and take these little tails and uh, pull them out around your shape here. And uh, if you need to adjust it, that's okay. 
So we have now what we have designated we wanted to be tracked. Now the next thing we're gonna do is actually put where we want our track points to be. Kind of like in uh, After Effects, you track a certain point. So we're gonna come up here to this little white box that says show planar surface. And we're gonna click that and then it's gonna create a box with four corners here. And uh, if you hit Z and you hold it and then you left click and you scroll up, this is how you zoom in. And then middle mouse button is how you move around. You are going to take these corners and put them in the corner of your screen here. So we will put it in that corner, this corner here and this corner and then uh, we can zoom out and so once you're happy with that you have now the shape you have the points that you're trying to track you can uh, kind of scroll through your footage and see but when you do this you want to make sure you're starting on the first frame otherwise you're gonna have to track backward then track forward which isn't a huge deal but starting on the first frame you got it set up uh, if you want it you can even show the planar surface that it's looking like it's gonna track so this is relatively what our phone looks like this is probably going to be good and we are going to come down to minimum pixel percentage used and what this is saying is that what is the minimum amount of pixels that needs to be in the next frame that allows that track to move forward so right now it's just saying 30 pixels is enough to make that track track the next data point so to be honest, this is gonna be a really bad track if you leave it like this. So you can either double click and change it or you can click and then just kind of scroll and hold that left mouse button down and move it up. And I'm gonna move it to 95%, which I recommend for you guys as well. The next important thing is we have motion right here and we have the motion properties that it is going to take into consideration when it is tracking your footage. And so for us, because I get closer and further away from my phone here, the perspective is changing. And so I need this motion perspective checkbox because I need to take that into consideration. Now, if your footage is not getting closer or further away or the perspective is not changing, you don't have to add this extra in. It's just going to make a, the track take longer and it gives you more data points than you really need. All right, so with these two properties good and you are at the beginning of your clip here and you like your shape that you've created and your four corners are good, we're gonna come down and go track to next frame if you wanna go frame by frame or track forward. And then Mocha AE is gonna go through every frame and track it. And so you can watch it and if for some reason you see a, a weird jump or anything along those lines, you can easily come and stop that go back a frame and start your tracking over again, maybe change some settings here and just try to make that track look good. All right, so Mocha AE just finished tracking our phone here and I recommend scrubbing through it and seeing how it turned out. And mine looks pretty dang good, but just for some of you who might've had an error somewhere, let's say at this keyframe, one of these corner points actually jumped or there's just a bad track somewhere. So let's go through the process of how to actually fix that really quick. And you would come down to that keyframe, go to dope sheet and go to layer one, go to track. And under that keyframe, you can actually select all the keyframes, all the tracking data and delete it. So I'm not gonna actually delete it, but actually I will, you can delete it. And so that's the bad tracking data. So then let's go back into parameters here. And now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go back one frame and then you're gonna wanna adjust some of these settings because obviously the track was not good for a specific reason. And so maybe adjust the minimum pixel percentage, maybe adjust if you're not getting a perspective motion, maybe uncheck that. And then you're just going to track forward one frame and Mocha AE is gonna reanalyze that frame and now you got new tracking data. It's as easy as that to fix. So once you have a good track, we're gonna come down to export tracking data. We're going to go to After Effects corner pin, support motion blur, and we're gonna go copy to clipboard. So let's jump back into After Effects and we have our picture here and let's just paste that tracking data by controller command V onto our picture and see what happens. 
So if you notice, it kind of went wonky and it, it didn't work as it's supposed to. I mean, we just brought over the exact tracking data. How, how come it's not working? And the reason for this, let's control Z that, is because when you paste that tracking data, Mocha AE expects this layer, so this image or video that you're trying to replace your screen with to be the same size as your composition size. So our composition is 1920 by 1080 currently. So this photo or video needs to be 1920 or 1080. And it's gonna seem kind of counterintuitive because you're gonna actually have to distort your video or your picture to match that frame size or that comp size. And so I'm actually going to, you can actually get it perfect if you want to, but I recommend going actually a tad bit bigger and you'll kind of understand why here after. So now if we were to come down and right click, pre-compose and move all attributes, that's important, hit okay. And so now you'll see that this now layer is our picture or your video and it's 1080 by 1920. It's the comp size here. So now if we were to paste our exported tracking data onto it, look at that. Now we have our picture or video in our phone screen. And so if you were to scrub through your footage here, let me back out, zoom out a little bit. You'll notice that it follows your phone. Look at that. And so that's pretty much the whole tutorial right there, guys. But I'm going to add in a little bit more for you. And the reason for this is because in my case, if you notice, my focus is right here currently. And this part of my phone is blurry. And that's because when I shot this clip, I used a low aperture. I think it was f1.4. And so my bokeh or bokeh, however you want to pronounce it, um, is going to be quite a bit in the parts of the video that are not in focus. So this is not in focus here, but if you notice our picture is in focus. And so it kind of throws off the realism of our actual uh, video here. So one way to fix this is to actually right click new and create a new adjustment layer. And we're gonna come up into effects and presets and search for a Gaussian blur, if I could spell here. We're gonna drop that on the adjustment layer here and uh, we can bump it up a lot right now. Let's bump it up to 20 just so you can see. So currently right now, this adjustment layer is affecting our whole video here, which we don't want. So we're gonna actually take the adjustment layer and our picture or video layer, and we're going to pre-comp those, move all attributes and hit okay. And now you notice that blur is only affecting our picture here. So now let's go into that. Actually, let's lock this. Let's go into that comp layer here. And I'm going to take it and move it off to the side so I can kind of see both views here. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is come and select our adjustment layer, come up and hit the masking tool and just create a mask around a part of your picture. So now if you notice, part of the picture is in focus, part of it is blurry. And so if you hit Come down, select your layer, hit double M to bring up the mask properties, and then let's feather this quite a bit so it's nowhere near obvious that we're purposely blurring this here. And so now what you can actually do is as your video scrubs through, you can come to the, let's say we come to the front here, and you can animate the mask path of this. So we can move this mask, if I can select it here to go over our video where our video is not in focus. So then let's say we scroll down here and then now we wanna move it back down a little bit. And obviously you can mess with the actual points of your mask, you can create more points, but I'm just trying to add a little bit more realism to this tutorial because where your picture is not in focus, it would technically be a little blurrier. With that guys, I hope you guys actually enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned maybe a little bit about Mocha AE and what it can do. And maybe you delved into some things into After Effects that you aren't used to as well. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I will see you guys next time. Peace.